Sparkles, what's up? And welcome back to Moonlight Jewel. Today's project is something that I've been looking forward for a while now. I partnered up with Yuvimi, a kawaii fashion online shop, and they were so kind to send me $300 of their product to try out and share with you guys. But of course, I'm gonna combine that with a doll customization. I recently received my Nico from Shusha doll, and I wanna make the same outfit that I got from Yuvimi for this doll. So basically, me and the doll will do a twinning look. I cannot wait to start this project, so let's unbox the Yuvimi package first so that you guys can see what I chose and what we will be working with. So here's the big package from Yuvimi. Uh, and yes, I already ripped it open because I'm a dumb dumb and I almost forgot that I wanted to film this part. I know, I'm a great content creator. <laughs> But I came to Senses in time and I haven't seen any of the product yet, so let's not waste any more time and unbox this. If you're not so interested in this part, I will put a timestamp here on the screen so you can skip, you can skip, so you can skip right to the dot part. All right, let's go. Okay, so the first thing I chose from Yubimi is this crop top with Kurumi on it. I love the little Ziploc bag in which it comes. I always keep those bags for storing things. The chain straps of the shirt are so cool and of course I had to get it because I love Kurumi and I love the Y2K aesthetic of this shirt. The best way to wear it is with a strapless bra. I really love this shirt. The fabric is super soft and it's a perfect crop top for the summertime. The metal straps are a bit cold when you put it on, but they warm up in no time. Okay, what do we have next? Ah yeah, the wig that I chose. It even comes with a wig cap. That's so nice. And also with an electrostatic wiglet. <laughs> Look at this color, it's so beautiful. The bangs also already have the perfect length, so you don't need to cut or style the wig at all. The fibers of the hair are super super soft and the wig is very lightweight and doesn't feel heavy on your head at all. I kind of like this hair color on me a lot. That's the cool thing about wigs, you can just change your style in a second and I love that so much. Okay, in this next bag there's a lot of small stuff. Let's see what's in those pretty packages. Ah, those seem to be the two pairs of contact lenses that I chose. I got two pairs in total, one in the color ocean blue and one in colorful green. Both of these lenses are absolutely beautiful and I'm so happy how nice they look. Sometimes I have trouble finding nice colored contacts because I have green eyes and usually they look better on darker eyes, but these look so so nice. Okay, what's next? Ah yes, oh, the heart shaped sunglasses, look at these! I just had to get them. I love the color and style so, so much. They're really nice and big and lightweight, so they don't feel heavy on your nose at all. I love the summer vibes they give off and can't wait for the sun to be out again in summer so I can wear them. Next thing to unbox is the choker. Ah yes, and you can see my boyfriend I'm is cleaning up the man. trash. This choker is so so cool. I mean, it's pink and has chains, so it couldn't be any more perfect. Look at this choker, oh my god, it's so pretty. I have a slight feeling that this choker is going to be my new favorite accessory. It's really comfortable because the vegan leather is very soft and it's not heavy at all. And silver plus baby pink is just the most beautiful color combination. Alright, what do we have here? Ah yes, the little devil horns. These are hair clips and they are so freaking adorable. I chose black ones because I have light pink hair, but they come in a bunch of colors. I love how shiny they are. Alright, we're still not done. What do we have next? Ah yes, the skirt. I fell in love with this skirt the moment I saw it. I just found the look of it so unique and it almost looks like a flower. The material is super soft, super stretchy and very thick, 
so that the skirt will definitely have the needed stand for those ruffles. And here's me wearing it. I was a little afraid of the sizing, but it actually fits perfectly because it's stretchy. It's so pretty. I feel so soft and girly wearing it. Alright, we're almost there. The next thing I got was this Eater bag. I've always wanted one, but never got the chance to get one, so it was time now. An Eater bag has a clear front window where you can put all the stuff that you love for other people to see, like plushies or maybe even dolls. And this one has cat ears that already sold me on it. The bag itself is really big and even has some little inside pockets. And here I filled in some plushies. You want them nuggies? What? How cute is that? It looks so cute and I will so wear this all the time now. Okay, last but definitely not least, the shoes. I've been looking forward for these so, so much. Look at these absolute beauties. These are so cute and unique and they have so many little details. I don't even know where to look at first. The vegan leather is super super soft as well and they should be very comfortable to wear. I also love that little lace detail in the front. So we unboxed everything now and if you are interested in Yovimi now, you have the chance to get 15% off your next order with the code MOONLIGHTJEWEL. Links are all in the description box below. You can get the same items, you can check out what else they have and yeah, have fun shopping. All right, but now that all is unboxed, let's see what doll we'll be working on today. All right, so here's the box of my Shushu doll Nico. I already unboxed her off cam, but I wanted to show you all the stuff that she came with first. First we have this little envelope. It has some photos of the different variations of Nico, little sandpaper sheets and two metal cards that are the certificates of authenticity. I think one is for the body and one is for the head. And here's the doll. Isn't she the cutest? I love her little elf ears so much and I went for the non-smiling expression. She has double jointed elbows and knees, which give her a great posing range. Nico is around 45 centimeters tall, so she's one of my bigger dolls. She also came with these 3D printed high heel shoes. I won't be using them now, but they're super cute for a future outfit. And she also came with two pairs of extra hands and a high heel feet. I love this doll and I'm so so excited to work on her now. Let's start with her outfit. First, let's make her top. For that I made a pattern and cut out the front part from white jersey fabric first. I made the graphic for the shirt in Photoshop and printed it out in different sizes on some fabric vinyl. Let's see what size is best. Yep, definitely the middle one. Since this is a transparent transfer vinyl, I printed it mirrored so I can put it face down onto the fabric directly. I'm gonna try to uh, iron this on now and let's hope it will work. I'm a bit scared because this is sometimes a bit hard to remove, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so with the iron press heated up, I'm putting a sheet of baking paper on top of the print and pressing it onto the fabric. Peeling this off is always a very hot matter, so you really have to be careful not to burn your fingers. But it turned out amazing. Now I just need to iron it one more time to really press the print into the fabric and then the print is ready. Okay, now I can finally sew the top by first sewing on the back pieces finished sides in. I ironed the seam allowance nice and flat 
and can now glue around the top and bottom seam allowance of the shirt with my trusty Uhu glue. Ew. All right, time to add the chains. I already attached a satin ribbon to one side of the chain and will now glue it onto the shirt like this. I then cut the chain to the length and attached a second one on the other side with the same length. Now I'm taking this little ring and thread in both chain ends to it. I close it and then attach another satin ribbon to it. After the ribbon is glued in place, I now just need to attach it onto the back of the shirt like this. I shorten it a bit and now just need to attach a closure. And with that, the shirt is already done! Isn't it cute? Okay, next thing to make is her skirt. I needed quite some time to figure out the pattern for this and I'll make it from jersey fabric. I first attached the back pieces to the front piece by sewing them on finished sides in. After that we can glue around the top seam allowance and all the small bottom seam allowances. Looks clean so far! The last thing to do, which took me the longest, was to attach six of these almost half circles to the bows of the skirt. I sew them on finished sides in and with a closure the skirt is done and it turned out better than I thought. Okay, we gradually increase the difficulty level here so let's make the eater bag now. I never made a backpack before but let's give it a shot shall we? I lined a piece of cream colored cotton fabric for the front part and will now attach these little loops with metal rings to it first. For the front back, I cut out the pattern piece from a clear vinyl. I'm then taking a zipper and will first cut the fabric part of it a little shorter. I burn the edges with a lighter so it won't fray and then attach one side of the zipper on the clear vinyl piece all the way around the bow part. Looks good! Let's see if it closes. Yep, perfect! Now I can cut the zipper short and attach it to the front fabric part. Alright, first part of the backpack done! I cut out the back part for the eater bag from cream colored vegan leather and also made some loops, straps and cat ears for it. For the pink leather of the cat ears I just painted it with acrylic paint because I didn't have pink leather. I first attached the loops to the big stripe. Then I glue on the handle and then the cat ears like this. Now I can take the back piece and will sew on the fabric strap like this. I also added some loops to the lower part of the pattern piece and with that the back part of the eater bag is also done. Now I'm taking a wider fabric stripe that I cleaned up, some smaller ones and a zipper. I fold around the smaller stripes like this and will attach the zipper to them. I do that on both sides and also sew the wider stripe to the zipper parts so I end up with this loop. Okay, hardest part, attaching the loop to the front and back part. I mark the middle of the pieces so I make sure it will be spread evenly and then sew on the back piece first. 
looks really good so far. Now we have to turn it inside out again and I'm scared. Ah, oh, I don't want to break it. Oh God. Then we take the front piece and sew it on the same way, finished sides in. This is gonna be really difficult to sew. <laughs> oh, help. And yes, I ended up sewing most parts of it by hand, but it turned out really, really nice. Now I just need to attach some straps to the backpack and with that it's done. I'm so proud of how it turned out and it's fully functional. Okay, let's make her glasses. For those, I just resized some glasses that Blue Pixie made for my own doll Lila. I 3D printed them in a self-mixed pink translucent resin. Here you can see me removing the print from the plate. I wanted to show you how I removed the supports from it with hot water as well, but my cam decided to become foggy. But it's super easy to remove the supports with hot water. Then I cleaned it in isopropanol and cure it in my Elego Mercury machine. After curing, it isn't shiny anymore because the alcohol makes the resin foggy. So I take some of my UV top coat and apply it all over the glasses. Throwing the brush around was of course also necessary. Bruh. Oh my god! <laughs> Oops. After curing, the glasses are completely shiny and transparent again. Yay! For the purple glasses, I printed a purple color onto transparent self-adhesive vinyl and will glue this onto a clear sheet of vinyl. I try to apply it as carefully as I can to avoid any major air bubbles. Then I traced the heart shape of the glasses onto the vinyl and will now cut them out. After that was done, I just need to glue them in with a shiny side towards the outside of the glasses. Looks good! Now just the second glass is missing and they're done! They look really really cool. I wish I could have gotten my hands on actual transparent purple vinyl, but I'm still super happy how they turned out. Onto the choker. For this one, I also painted some of the cream colored pleather pink and cut out two stripes. On the small stripe, I already placed some markings that I will need as a guide. First, I'm going to place some glue onto the second and third dot and apply some miniature studs to them. I then repeat the step for the fifth and sixth and eighth and ninth dots. Then I'm taking two little rings and hook them together like this. I thread them onto the choker and spread them evenly between those mini studs. Now I'm taking the other stripe and will carefully glue the small stripe on top of it. After it was dry, I can now take a small little chain on which I attached a little ring and hand sew it onto the remaining markings with a few stitches and making the necessary loops with chains. Looks really really good so far! I also thread a small little buckle to one end of the choker and just need to glue the end piece in place now. And with that, the choker is done and I'm super impressed how realistic it looks. Also, I'm happy that painting the pleather worked out so nicely and it doesn't chip off at all. Okay, while we're making accessories already, let's quickly make her little horns as well. For that, I used some foam clay in grey, because I didn't have black one, and totally went out of camera focus when sculpting them, but it's basically just a ball that I made pointy. I then also take a small magnet and push it into the horn on the bottom. After the horns were dry, I then take my black acrylic paint and 
paint them black. Wow, I did great with writing the sentence, didn't I? Anyway, once they're painted, I attach them to my tweezers with a magnet so I can more easily gloss them with UV top coat. A good curing in my UV lamp later, they are done and I'm so in love how shiny they turned out. The magnets also work perfectly. Okay, let's make the hardest part of the whole project, the shoes. I successfully misprinted the first batch of soles for them that Blue Pixie sculpted for me, but luckily I can use them as a template for the inner sole while printing the new ones. I already made a template for the shoe soles and now just need to trace them onto some cardboard. After cutting them out, I wrapped my doll feet in cling film and will attach the soles with some masking tape to the feet like this. Then I'm taking some foam clay again, I know it's pink because I had no white one left, <laughs> and will now sculpt a little toe cap for the boots on both feet. I tried to make it as smooth as I can, which isn't so easy with foam clay, but I think I made it work in the end. While those little bases are drying, I ironed some white fabric vinyl onto some white fabric to give the illusion of a super smooth leather. Here I'm cutting out the tongue pieces from that material first, before taking some of the cream colored pleather and placing it underneath the vinyl covered fabric. I then stitched those pieces together with my sewing machine and cut it out neatly. To seal off the edges I'm taking some PVA glue on my finger and dab it onto the edges all the way around the piece. Now I pretty much just need to do that to all of the rest of the pieces for the shoe. That's gonna take a while. So here I have two boot pieces for one boot and we'll now sew them together on the back seam finished sides in. After that was done, I'm making sure the seam allowances are nice and flat on the back and we'll then flat stitch the seam allowance from the outside. I also cut the bottom in a zigzag already so it will be easier to glue on the sole later. Then I'm taking the heel piece and will glue it in place on the bottom of the boot piece. I also added some eyelets off cam and it already looks really really nice. But now comes the trickiest part. I needed to add zippers and for that I need to cut into the boot piece. I'm scared. <laughs> I can literally destroy this now. Ah! Oh god. Oh god. After procrastinating a little, I took the courage to cut into it. I will now glue around the seam allowances for the zipper like this. This way I can sew in the zipper like that neatly. This is after I sewed it in and shortened it. Oh, and I also removed the zipper pull down attachment thingy, is that called like that? To replace it with my own. I made this little attachment with a layered fabric, a ring and a little cross so I can use that for the zipper. I just need to bend the ring open and thread it into the zipper head. Oh, it looks so cool and it's fully functional. Now I just need to attach a bunch of more stuff and a second zipper to the boot piece and this is how it looks like afterwards. The shoe bases were also dry now, so I can first glue the tongue piece to them like this. I then painted the toe cap white and can now glue on the boot piece all the way around the sole until the toe cap. This was really finicky so I did it off cam but it turned out even better than I expected. Okay, for covering the toe cap I'm taking some white jersey fabric and will glue it onto the toe cap. I use jersey fabric because I can pull it completely wrinkle free, which is important for a neat look. I make sure to glue it around the edges as neat as I can and snip off any excess. After it was done, it looked like this. It's not completely smooth, so I first add a thick layer of PVA glue to it to get rid of the fabric texture. I 
And when it was dry, I went in with a bit more UV resin to make it super smooth. After curing, I then painted it white with some matte acrylic paint. Looks good! Here you can also see the new printed soles. I painted them white as well and can now spread a bunch of glue on them to glue the boot onto the sole. I pressed it together for a while and then added a white embroidery thread to hide the gaps between the shoe and the sole around it. I prepared a little front piece already by using nail art decoration and some lace and now just glue that to the top of the shoe. And with that, the shoes are done and I'm so so proud of how they turned out. They're not 100% perfect just yet, but I hope with some more practice I will get even better and faster at shoemaking, especially faster, because these took me about 3 days to make. Oops. I'm very proud though that they look pretty much exactly like the shoes that I got from Yuvimi. Okay, let's make her wig. When taking a close look on her wig, I realized that I did not have the right shade of hair color in my doll hair stash. I only had this burgundy-ish color and it almost fits, but not quite. I however also had this jumbo braid and I feel like if I blend it, it could maybe work. For that, however, I need to straighten the jumbo braid first and I usually do that with my mini iron and very carefully not to burn the hair. Okay, so here I have the one color here, the other color from the jumbo braid straightened and here I made a little blend. I don't know if you guys can see that well, but let's see if that fits. Oh, wow, it's exactly the same color. <laughs> we made it guys. Yes, yes. So after the blend turned out perfect, I made a wig cap of cam and a bunch of wefts so we can start the gluing process of the wig. This is business as usual, I start at the bottom and glue layer by layer all the way to the top of the wig. By the way, if you're interested in my own BJD, I'm hosting another pre-order on January 15th at 8pm CET. It's gonna be the last chance to grab Lila or Alien. So here I'm just adding more and more layers of hair onto the wig until I reach the very top. To cover up those glued parts, I'm going to wrap around a weft around some cardboard and bend it around with heat. After removing it from the cardboard, it looks like this and can now be glued as a parting line onto the wig. And after cutting her bangs and styling the wig, it looks like this and I really 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 love this wig. Okay, on to the final step for this doll, the face! I actually like to paint the face as last step because it ties the whole doll together in the end and that's the most relaxing part for me as well. I start by dusting on some glitter onto the face and then add some nice pink blushing to her ears and cheeks. After that, I start sketching out the eye lines with a brown pencil. As I mentioned in my Kuromi video, anime eyes are not that easy for me to draw, because the simpler the lines, the easier they can look bad, so I really take my time here. Since I won't be gluing lashes, I added three tiny lashes to her eye lines. I got that idea from Miki Yochi, an insanely talented face-up artist on Instagram. After the eyelines were sketched out perfectly, I take my matte acrylic paint and start filling them in with that color. I also add a tiny amount of paint to her mouth lines for some more depth. Yep, looks good! Time to paint her teeth white with some white acrylic paint. Oh my god, that looks so adorable! Oh. Now it's time for eyebrows. I usually take some pastel chalk dust on a small brush and dust the shape onto the doll first. Yep, that looks about right. 
After I'm satisfied with the eyebrow shape, I now go in with some brown gouache paint and draw some single hairs to the eyebrows. After adding some little highlights in white to the cheeks and eyelids, I decided to glue some tiny stars to the eyes. And of course, pearly shimmers! Can't be missing my most favorite part. <laughs> Last but not least, I need to gloss her lips and waterline for some extra sheen. And with that, the face is done. And I must say I'm falling in love with anime aesthetic dolls more and more. Look at her. Oh. Alright, let's quickly make her some eyes. For that I use my half sphere mold that I have and first add some UV resin to it. Then I dust some glitter on top of it and spread it with a needle. I decided to make her green eyes inspired by the green contact lenses, so I drew these eye bases on my iPad and printed them on shiny cardboard. I then used the biggest version, cut it out and now need to place it on top of the UV resin. I then cured it for 2 minutes in my UV lamp. Here I mixed some UV resin with white resin pigment and now pour that on top of the cured eye. I won't fill the half sphere in completely because eye chips will be already enough for the stall head. Bubbles can be burned off with a lighter. After curing it, it's time to demold. Did they turn out nice? Oh wow, yes, they turned off perfectly. Aww. Now I just need to make a second one and I just love how they look. Let's use editing magic to insert the eyes. Ah yes, perfect. Okay, I'm so in love with her. <laughs> wow. And Sparkles, I think with that we have made everything that needed to be made for this custom doll. Let's take away all the pieces from the rail and get her and me ready. Are you ready for the finished result? twin look. How did you like this project? It was such a cool thing for me to make miniature versions of the clothes that I received. And by the way, if you like the items that I got, you can now get 15% off on uvb.com using my code Moonlight Jewel. All the links to the products that I received are in the description box below as well. By the way, if you want to get some of the doll clothing patterns for this doll, you can now become a member of my YouTube channel. With becoming a member, you will get exclusive access to behind the scenes material that I don't show anywhere else, patterns, a member only Discord and much more. So check it out if you're interested.
Also, as always, special thanks to my patrons and Twitch subscribers. Thank you so, so, so much for your support. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video and have a beautiful, creative day. Bye!